Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Welcome to the Chasing Dreams podcast. Today we have Miss Karima Williams, and we're talking about online presence, okay? Because if anything that COVID has taught us, you need to be online, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Karima is the CEO of DreamWorth and Company LLC, which is a small PR agency that works with small business owners and entrepreneurs to help them take their dreams beyond the pillow, okay? Yeah. <laughs> For two years, Karima has worked with entrepreneurs in fashion, culinary arts, finance, fitness, real estate, technology, travel, and nonprofit organizations. With a bachelor's degree in communication studies from East Strasburg University and a five years experience at marketing experience at the Juan Institute of Graduate Studies, Karima has a vast background in marketing, digital marketing, graphic website design, public relations, email marketing, and strategic planning welcome to the podcast karima thank you thank you that was the intro thank you girl <laughs> i know it's all that <laughs> thank you i try to give y'all justice okay y'all yes. are dope so i try to make sure your intros are just as dope okay <laughs> thank you absolutely so i like to start off each conversation conversation <laughs> by asking what is the dream for you the dream for me is to live a comfortable life to mm. not live paycheck to paycheck. Okay. Live a life where I can not only be a blessing and like I'm I'm good comfortably, but I have uh, the means of helping others in my family, friends, whatever. And I have the luxury of not feeling down to work. Um, and just to you know be able to you know, my sister needs a vacation, girl. I'm gonna send you on a vacation. My nephew needs this. I'm gonna send you on a vacation. Home. Say it again. Can you send me on the best <laughs> that, that, That's the dream, girl. That's the dream. I'm working towards it. <laughs> I'm working towards it. But yeah, the dream is to definitely just live a comfortable lifestyle and to make my family and friends to have a comfortable life as well, where I can be a blessing to them. So yeah. Awesome. And finance is not an issue. They're like, oh, I want to be the rich auntie. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> rich auntie. <laughs> Man, the so traveling auntie. That's what I yeah. want to be. Okay. So when did you realize the dream and how has it changed over the years for you? So I realized that I could do more um, and that I had this creative drive within me. Um, a few years ago when I was in the beginning stages at my full-time job, I realized that I didn't want to just be bound to one um one audience in a sense. I work at a small graduate school. So my audience is of course graduate students and we have a clinic. So it's patients and students. And I realized I don't want to just be bound to this. Like I want to work with people outside of this and in different fields and everything and just grow. And then at the same time, like I don't want to, if anything happens to my job that I'm stuck without a job, I want to be able to have that comfort of knowing like I have money stored away. I can work at my own pace. And on my own time. So that was a that was a few years ago. It was back in 2016 and I realized, hey, I, I can really do this. Um, so that's just been me ever since then. And I've just been building it up and working towards it and helping others work towards their dreams as well. Love it, love it. So you've been in business for almost four years now. Um, what are some of the successes and failures you've seen over that time? So some of my successes, I would definitely say, uh, it's always a success to see someone that I've designed their, their either their website or their logo just come to life. Yeah. For me, it's always my aha moment. When I design a logo, like I have a client and I designed her logo and then I went over to her house for a meeting and I saw her logo. It's, she has a fashion brand. I saw her logo on like the um, the wardrobe bag and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Like, oh my God, she was like, where you designed it? I'm like, I know, but it's always, it's the aha moment. So to me, it's always a success to see my clients when they actually take what I've designed for them and they bring it to life and they they, they take it and they, they go forth with it. Um, so that's just been that. Um, and then my struggles, my, my failures, in a sense, the things that I've struggled with, I don't want to say they're failures because they always just been learning. Hello. Learning, um, learning uh, lessons for me. But um, just learning, like, 
um, that I am one person and that I don't have to do everything. I came into it thinking that I had to do everything. Like I need to offer all these different services. You want it, I got it here. I want to be a one-stop shop. And then I, I realized that I'm like drained. <laughs> that, that that momentum can die out. You can, your little flame, your little putt putt in my train. My little train can only go but so far. <laughs> Okay. My little friend can only go but so far. So I've I've realized like my learning lessons in a sense was um me pacing myself, me putting myself on a oh right, okay, you need this you need this time out before you really like get stressed. Um and then of course whenever I do feel stressed, I'm like, all right, maybe I haven't really been talking to God about this project. So mm-hmm. I always incorporate it, make sure I incorporate God into everything that I do. So it's like, Lord, what are you telling me? Should I have not taken this project? Should I have taken this? You telling me to rest because obviously rest is very important. Um, so yeah, my learning lessons has definitely just been to not take on too much to realize that what I'm capable of and to, um, to really slow down, to not feel like I have to do everything, but to actually like push it out to other people and not to feel like I'm doing someone a disservice or I'm doing myself a disservice by saying, hey, I can refer you to somebody else who can do this. I'm learning the referral game, <laughs> referral game on myself. Like people send me referrals all the time. I'm like, that's great. Like, but I ain't got the time. <laughs> so I'm learning how to do that. And um, it's just, it's been really helpful in just, you know, and even that sort of kind of helps me build my um, my like little network in a sense. Because if I know someone like friends, you know somebody who does podcasts, absolutely. Like I've, I've court, sort of kind of pushed off the PR side. But if someone comes to me and they're like, I'm really trying to like, you know, get my foot in the door. And of course I know somebody who does. I, Tiara, she does it. You can listen. I know I can hit her up for you and I can yeah. tell you what you say and everything. So these sort of kind of things, I don't technically need to have my own podcast. I know someone who does. I don't need to have, you know, I don't do business business planning in a sense, business um, plans and um, credit repair, but I know people who do. Right. So me setting that up and saying, okay, you don't have to dip and dabble into that because it's so easy to do that as an entrepreneur to get stuck into like, or getting expired, inspired and you're like, oh, I can do that in my business. Oh, I can do that too. I can do that. I can do that. I was doing that for a long time and I was like, no, stick to your bread and butter. And just work off of it and stay consistent with it. Hello. And I think that's definitely a challenge. And I see it with a lot of my clients. And it's like, I could do this. I could do this. Okay, but what are you great at? Like, what were you put on earth to do? Um, I'm a firm believer that you can absolutely have it all. But, baby, you got to build one level at a time. You can't be out here trying to solve all the world's problems. Pick one. Pick one. I agree. Absolutely. So since you've been in business, what are some of the things that you wished you would have done differently? I wish I would have since, let me make sure I turn my iPad off. I wish that I would have, um, I wish I would have taken the route of allowing people to do things themselves before. I wish I would have opened the opportunity of digital products sooner. Um, That way they gave me more time to be creative. Mm-hmm. Um, on my own because <laughs> I, I love to design but I sometimes feel stifled when I get projects that are like the person is like really really gung-ho about stuff and it kind of stifles me and what I want to do creatively so I wish I would have started out more of just offering things for people to try on their own and do digital products and just push them out and just make it more commercialized versus it being really one-on-one um so I wish I would have done that differently I also wish I would have um I wish I would have started out sooner. I wish I would have gained the mo- more momentum um, when I first started out in college. I wish I would have I would have done this. I often think like last night I was like, okay, this one right now. I could have I could have started this way back in college if I could. If I could, and I literally literally was thinking like if I could wake up tomorrow and it'd be the first day of college, I would do things totally different. I would start designing websites my freshman year of college. If God gave me this vision to do it, I would have done it right there. But yeah, I would I would have given people a lot more. I would have given myself more time to be creative, and would have given given more people given people more opportunity to do things, have things done for them. So done for them products where they can customize it themselves. And I, I just would have changed the game like that. <laughs> I and I I so resonate with what she said. Like if I knew my purpose when I went to college, everything would have been different. Right. Um, 
I probably still would have had the same major because I was a psychology major and I see mm-hmm. the benefit there. Um, but I probably would have done something like communications or yeah. alongside the psychology major. And I didn't even go into college as a psych major. That was my third major. Oh, wow. <laughs> right um, and so, you know, I would have went in probably psychology and communications. I would have started the business while in college. Wow. I would have okay. refund checks so that I wouldn't, you know what I mean? Like I, and I went to school on a full academic scholarship. So my refund checks were like, cash it wasn't a loan you know what I mean yeah. and I'm like I was literally touching seven thousand a semester do you know that could have went towards my salary for a whole year I mean I mean but I went to college unclear about my life's purpose yeah trying to figure it out so like now granted I will say the money went towards mostly went towards valid things like I would pay my rent for the semester you know things like that but <laughs> Like, I just would have been a lot smarter about that money, yeah. um, particularly the first two years when I was living on campus. There was no rent. You know, every the refund was complete, a refund. So I just would have been a lot smarter about how I handled that money, but also how I handled that time. Yeah, same. Because, one, I could have been building the business and learning and and being organic in that aspect. But, two, I could have been set up for success to go straight into entrepreneurship as opposed to getting a regular job because that's what society tells you you're supposed to do. Right. Neither here nor there. But (laughs) if I had it to do over, that is how I would have done it. Same. I, I I totally agree. Timing, I would have done, I would definitely have used my time a lot more wisely in college. And yeah, I'm, I'm sitting, while you're talking about refund checks, I'm like, Lord, what did I spend my refund check on besides <laughs> and outfits and food? Okay. <laughs> okay. I, mean, that I, I don't even use. I'm sitting here trying to think that, what did I use my, ref, my refund checks for? <laughs> but yeah. I, I get it. <laughs> There's a couple checks where I'm like, I don't even know what that went towards. Like, like but you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna, we're not gonna have one to pass. We're we're here right now. We're present and we're we're thriving. <laughs> we're thriving. <laughs> So I know you have a lot of different projects and we were talking about a few of them in advance, but let the audience know um, a few of the projects that you have going on and what might be your favorite. Okay. So right now I'm, it's a couple projects I'm working on. I'm working on a website design project um, for a minister. Nice. Um, awesome. So I'm working on her website. I'm also working on a website for a um, phlebotomist. Okay, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm working on her website, which is great. Um, I'm also I've launched um I have a, a a academy with Teachable. So I have an online course academy where I have two courses right now. One is free and it's helping people who have just launched their website or they just got their website and they're like, okay, I have it, but you haven't really taken the necessary steps to, you know, promote it or announce it to people. I have a free course on my website. Um, under courses that helps people to bring the hype to their new website, as well as um, I also have a course on Dubsado, which is a systems for entrepreneurs who are like, I don't have the time to do everything manually anymore. It helps them to kickstart into automation and getting things like contracts and payments and just regular emails that you're constantly saying over and over. It can be automated and pushed in. I have a, a course on that too. Um, so I'm working with clients right now on developing that system. I'm working with them one-on-one to develop systems within their, their business. Like, okay, what are you doing manually? No, that can be automated. Um, I'm also, I have currently, I launched uh, website templates, which we talked about prior, about, you know, allowing people during this time to, even though if they can't afford a, a website designer, because it can be costly, our time is costly, um, but you can, while you're at home, you still can get high quality custom design work. I offer Wix templates. Wix is my favorite go-to when it comes to just easily being able to set up a website, knowing the ins and outs of how to update your website, how to, you know, link it up for SEO. I created special, uh, customized templates, three customized templates in my shop, on my website for people to just dive in. And it, I also give like a walkthrough of how to update it. So you're not completely lost in the sauce. Yeah. <laughs> So you're not like making your header blue and your, your technically your brand colors are pink and green, but you got a blue banner and you got a, a red footer. 
<laughs> so I help you in making sure your images aren't like cropped images off of Google or your Instagram page. <laughs> so I've created that as well. I've created templates for folks during this time. Um, and as well as I will be launching later Dubsado templates for those who are like, they want to make it nice and branded and on brand. I've created that as well. So I've gotten a lot of digital products that I'm, I'm working on right now in the, in the back end, as well as, um, you know, my one-on-one -on -one projects, of course, is always going to be website design, which is my, uh, which is my baby. But yeah, I'm excited. And I'm also working with the photographer. She's a new uh, emerging photographer in Philly. So I'm working with her on her website as well. So a lot of website projects. People are getting their websites this this COVID season. Okay. Master, use that time wisely. Yeah. So which one's your favorite? My favorite one, I, oh man, it's hard to put clients. I hate to pin clients like to each other. I'm not, I'm not going to say I have a favorite one. I have two favorite clients that I currently work with and they're just like recurring clients of mine. Um, do I have to mention their names? No, 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 no. <laughs> <I'll say. laughs> no. I don't want no trouble. Okay. okay I don't want, I don't want no trouble. But one of them is a, is a credit repair client. I'm okay. on his website and he, I'm constantly, I'm working with him right now and developing the system within his businesses. He, he makes a lot of money and he, he really loves what he does, but He's been doing a lot of stuff manually. So I've been working with him and making sure that everything, there's a, a good workflow and funnel in place. I've been working with him as well as his brother, which I'm working with him and helping him get his pages and his funnels and everything with the upside together on his website. So websites and funnels at this point, which I, I love, I love the, 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 the real like into the weeds of getting to know people's businesses and saying, okay, how are you doing this? All right, you know, right. We can we can automate that. We can get that. That's that's too much. You're doing you're you're going to cut so much time out if we just have this email sent out automatically for you. This payment sent out automatically for you. So I'm working on it, and that helps me because I'm learning at the same time. Like I've never really set up systems for people before, but my one client, like we're close, so it's like okay, he's like, "Ring, this didn't work," and I'm like, "Okay, let me let me fix it." Because I don't want you to lose money. Because if you lose money, I lose money. <laughs> so I said, let me fix it. And then yesterday he called me. Whatever you did, it it worked. It's perfect. And I was like, oh, thank you. I was like, oh. before it wasn't people weren't paying wasn't paying through that way. But now they're like, they're I'm getting like constant emails. They they fill out the form. They pay. They fill out the form. They pay. I said, oh, perfect. So yes, thank you. So it, that's another success for me to see that my systems and what I'm doing to help people make sure that they're not you know using up too much of their manual time. So automate stuff is is helpful. Awesome. So with all that you have going on, how are you able to stay confident and consistent? <sighs> Prayer. <laughs> okay. I realize I literally I I'm a I'm a Jesus freak. I love God, and I every day I make it my business <laughs> to wake up before I touch anything, before I respond to an email, before I respond to a client, before I work on anything, I have to sit down. I have to study God's word to make sure I'm in the right space mm -hmm. because I, I get, I get anxious and I get anxiety and I get stressed out. So if my day is not start off with God first, everything, my confidence is low. Everything is low. I, I, I need God to set my mind and my mood for the rest of the day. Okay. <laughs> and I, I, I realize that and that has happened plenty of times where I'm like, why am I so stressed out? Oh, I skip my morning session with God to go to the supermarket or to mm -hmm. work on this. Or someone had called me at eight o'clock in the morning and threw me off track. So yeah. I literally make it my duty. Okay, first things first, I have my coffee and I get my Bible out and I study. <laughs> so that's my thing. Like I that and that that works for me. I'm like I'm less I'm less stressed and I'm less I'm more confident in knowing. Um, okay, this is this can get done. What did I read this morning? Yes, it can get done. Give it to Christ. Yes, it can get done. I'm giving it to God. I ain't going to worry about it. So. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So give us a little update of what you're working on and where you see yourself in business now. Like, where is your business? What stage? So DreamWorks, I would still say at this stage, she's more so, I would say she's like in, she's a first grader, first grade, second grade. If I can give her like an age, she's, she's the first, because she's still in elementary school, but she's growing, you yeah. know, kind of smart. But, um, I'm, I'm currently, I'm, I'm more so, like I said, I'm taking, I'm pulling myself back a little bit when it comes to one-on-one -on -one projects. I'm pulling back, I'm restraining myself because I've realized I've exerted myself 
to the point of exhaustion several times over the years to the point where I've been stressed and I've been, you know, tired and worn out and I've been not, I haven't been resting properly and it shows in my weight because <laughs> I'll eat, I'll, I'll just be up eating and working for a project. So I've been pulling myself back to offer more digital products and to offer more courses so that I can work and be creative when I want to. Yeah. Given myself, I've been working around other people's time and clients' time so much that I've lost my like my drive and my my freedom of being creative. So working um and just allowing me to to design digital products and to set them out so that people when someone says and they people come to me all the time, I can't be a one stop shop. But what I can do is you you might not be able to work with me one on one. But I do I don't want to turn you away completely without giving you a, another alternative option. So I'm in the process of creating the alternative options here of um, even though someone can't work with me, here's another option. My shop has these for more people to meet you at your price point and to meet you at your time. If you're like, listen, I need this right now, go to my shop. If you're like, oh, I can learn. I just I, I can learn it. I just I just need you to show me. Go to my courses. If you're like, OK, I need something a little bit more free, free 99. I have a resource library on my website, which has. Uh, 24, 24 different downloads for people to download. So I have so many downloads. I've updated that last month and my email list has skyrocketed. So many people were like, yes, I need this. And they've been downloading stuff. So yeah, I'm trying to meet people everywhere they are, but also make sure that I have time for myself <laughs> so that I can refresh and rest my creative juices before I just start sending them out. Absolutely. So what would you say is your number one secret to success? My number one secret to success, I would definitely say is prayer. Mm. Prayer. If I can't, if you don't, if you don't pray about it, it ain't going to work. Hello. Bottom line. <laughs> if, you, if you're not praying about it, if you're not seeking someone higher, if you're not seeking God to, to order your steps, it ain't going to work. That's my secret to success. And I, I believe that because um, and I don't want to get too deep into it, but Job, he was someone who was a man of God who was after God's own heart and he had everything. And it's like, well, what was his, what was his thing? And I read that. And I'm like, what was Job's thing? He feared God and he shunned evil. That's the secret to success, to fear God and to shun evil. So that's why I leave it. That's <laughs> and evil. and yeah. let her say amen. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So you have given us so many great tips. What final thoughts do you have for the audience? So I would say if you are looking to build your online presence and you're, you're not sure, you're not ready to commit just yet to a full website, the best thing I would say is to definitely focus in on where your people are. So definitely figuring out where your, where your audience is. If they're on Instagram, then you need to be on Instagram. If they're on Facebook, then you need to be on Facebook. And then definitely to build up your audience and to get them engaged, you have to be posting. I know for some people, they're like, um, I've, I've come across people so often that they want to hire a social media manager. And that's great. But you also have to realize that that social media manager, they need to be able to do the, the, the footwork and the engagement. And maybe that's where you come in at. They manage your stuff, but you also during the week, even if they're posting, you still have to jump on comments. You still have to jump on live. You still have to engage with people. Um, so I would definitely say to build up your engagement, your following socially um, to help with your, your, your presence and then um, go from there. And then also building up your email list because obviously social media can die today or tomorrow and where's everyone at? So you definitely want to have some type of email presence online, um, whereas you can, you know, connect with people, whether it's through MailChimp, ConvertKit, Flowdesk, whatever. Um, and then when you're ready to commit, when you're, you're really ready to get a website, hit your girl up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but when you're ready to get a website, because your website is obviously your like your, your stamp of approval. Um, you want a website that is mobile responsive, that looks good on mobile, because not everybody's going to look at you from your computer. Most people want no, most people won't. It's about 60, 40. That's my average that I give 60% look on mobile. The other 40 is on desktop. You may get 60, 30. The other 10% is on a tablet, but for the most part, everyone's looking on mobile. Um, and then of course your, your website and making sure that that is connected to Google so that you, of course, can, people can Google and search you and then going from there. So you can build from there, you can build even engage more and expand more within your online presence within ads, Google ads, Facebook ads, 
YouTube ads, whatever the case may be. But I would definitely say if you're if you're looking to, you know, I don't know where to start, I don't know where to begin. The very nice beginner friendly way is to definitely just engage with people first to see what they're looking for and to see because maybe you might think you have all the answers until someone you're talking to them on, on social media, you see something that they post and you're like, I offer that. Why aren't they seeing what I'm offering? Maybe you're not wording it correctly. So definitely starting off socially and then when you're ready to move into to, to your website. So where can they find you? So you can find me on my website at dreamworth, D-R-E-A-M-W-O-R-T-H, worth.co, C-O. Or you can also follow me on Instagram. I'm heavy on Instagram at dreamworth underscore co. You can also follow me on Facebook. You can like me on Facebook. Um, but for the most part, I'm, I'm an Instagram girl. So you can definitely check me out on there. And you can, of course, e- email me via my website. Yeah, so holla at her, okay? Slide in her DM real quick. Okay, let her know you need help. Yes. (laughs) Awesome. Well, Karima, thank you so much for being a part of the podcast. Um, I've learned a lot. We about to chat in about two seconds, okay? (laughs) All right, guys, we'll see you next week.